Hey everybody, I'm back with the next video in the series outlining the programs and scripts I'm using to make this mini ITX BMC build as user-friendly as possible. And the next one we'll be going over is the remote. Now, a lot of people like to use their phone or tablet. XBMC has a app for both um, Android and iPhone tablets and phones to control XBMC from your phone or tablet, but just for the sake of ease of use, and just in case the family I'm making this build for wouldn't happen to have an iPhone or Android phone or tablet um, available, I wanted to make sure they had something they could control XBMC with at all times. So I went ahead and bought the Rosewool RHRC1102 Windows Media Center um, PC remote, and this remote is actually really nice. It's pretty solid, it's only 20 bucks, so in terms of other wireless um, remotes that'll work with a PC, it's really good. And it has all the buttons you could really need for XBMC and Windows Media Center. And I did make some changes to it to make it more XBMC focused because all these remotes are really fine-tuned for Windows Media Center. And you can follow along with these changes if you have a different kind of remote. But one thing to make sure of, these changes only work if the remote shows up as an eHome infrared transceiver in your um, Windows device manager. Otherwise, you're going to want to take a look at the XBMC remote wiki, and I'll provide a link to that in the description if you want to make changes to the way your Windows Media Center PC remote works. But since this one is an eHome infrared transceiver, we're in luck. And someone on the XBMC forums made an excellent set of tools. And it's basically a auto hotkey script and a series of registry edits but this program installs them all automatically for you so you don't have to worry about typing it out or um, editing the wrong registry entry which is really nice and basically what this does I'm not going to run the installer again because I've already done it while I was testing it out is that once this is done installing it will make the buttons that are Windows Media Center focused on this remote work with Windows or not Windows Media Center but XBMC and so for an example you can't see it but I'm going to press the big green Windows button that most of these PC remotes will have it's set to by default launch Windows Media Center but now it launches XBMC and of course all the changes I've made and all the um, programs and scripts I used to make these changes I will put in the description because I know a lot of people um, sent me messages asking how I got the remote to work well and I want to make sure I can help you guys out and as you can see the remote works perfect in XBMC I made a couple of changes I'll outline those a bit later in this video and you can go look at things use the arrow keys to control and it works great. We even have a way to use Windows Media Center and Netflix like I mentioned in the Windows Media Center overview video. That is another script written by someone on XBMC, uh, the forums. Like I said, the forums are a great place to go for help and a lot of ideas. I basically just took from a lot of different people, put it all together, and I'm making a video to show you um, who and where I found those. And now we're in Windows Media Center watching Netflix. And as you can see, I'm not using the keyboard at all. I'm using the remote. And it works just as well in Windows Media Center as it does in XBMC. The fast forward, stop, play, pause, rewind buttons, they all work in both XBMC and Windows Media Center perfectly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of Windows Media Center right now. And we're back in XBMC. But for now, I'm going to close XBMC because we want to get back to how I made the remote work so well. Not only did I have this um, registry edit, but we also have this program here. And this is a remote key mapper. This is really nice. If you want to edit any of the remote's um, keystrokes that it sends to your computer, you can do it right here. And the only changes I made from what that uh, registry edit program had is that I made two changes. I took the sharp and multiply keys or asterisk and pound keys depending on how you view it and I set those to L and Y. L is the subtitles track 
Remember how I said I like to add subtitles as their own file? Well, to make sure that I can swap between them in XBMC, I'm going to need a button for those. And the remote I have doesn't have the colored buttons that a lot of Windows Media Center PC remotes have. So I had to improvise, and I noticed I had the pound key and the asterisk key. So I went and set those to subtitle and audio track. And the reason I used audio track, and let me show you real quick, is that in XBMC, if you want to use um, full surround sound, you have to have a AV receiver or something that you can, um, something that supports DTS pass through. And right now I'm using my uh, Avermedia capture card, and that does not support Dolby Juice Surround. And what happens is if you play a movie that has that, what will happen is you'll notice this slowdown, and it gets kind of choppy. That's because it can't um, process all the audio data. So what I'm doing when I make these rips is I make a second one, that is AC3, which is still surround, but not as high quality, but it does play on any receiver or TV without a receiver. So that way, if the family that I'm making this for happens to want to take this to somewhere, say like a vacation house or a hotel they're staying at, they can just make sure to switch over from DTS to AC3 and it'll work just fine. But when they're on their home TV, which I know has an uh, AV receiver and a full surround sound setup, then it'll work just fine with uh, Dolby True Surround. And that's the main reason we wanted to use that neat little remapping tool. I also made one very small change to the keyboard.xml uh, file in the user settings of XBMC. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about with that, just look at the XBMC um, remote wiki link that I'll put in the description, like I said before and it'll explain that to you. I made a very minor change. I will be attaching that to the end of this video, as well as links to all of the programs and scripts I used in this video and outlined. And that's pretty much it for the remote. It works very well. You can go in and out of XBMC very easily. You can hop over to Windows Media Center and Netflix from XBMC, which is to press of a button. And I also set up the script to copy a DVD or Blu-ray from the hard drive to XBMC. But I will be saving that for another video because, like I said before, it's kind of a interesting script. It took a lot of tweaks to get it working right, and I think it deserves its own video. As always, if you like what you saw, feel free to like this video, um, comment, subscribe, and if there's anything else you guys want me to test or try out or see if I can get working for you guys, let me know, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching.